Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Here at Mad About Skin, we're passionate about helping you to get the most out of your skincare. So if you haven't already, now's a fantastic time to click that link below, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell, and you won't miss out on any of our amazing future content. Now, in today's video, we're gonna be doing another full brand review. This time on a brand which you guys have begged and begged and begged me to review, and that is Face Theory. I think the reason I'm getting quite a lot of requests for this particular brand is because they're doing a lot of social media advertising at the moment. So the brand's really exploded into people's consciousness. The packaging's gorgeous, and a lot of people want to know whether the products inside it live up to the hype and the packaging itself. So today we're gonna to do a deep dive into the brand. Normally in this series, I would do a full review of every single product that sits below the brand. However, that's been a little bit difficult because I haven't been able to get my hands on all the products, nor had time to try every single one of them. So what I've done is pulled together a select edit and bought the select edit of the products which I am most impressed with online, and which I think best represent the brand um, and what I'm going to do is highlight the five best those ding 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 must have products and the five worst wah, 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 firm passes that you just need to save your money and avoid hopefully that way you'll be able to get a full view of the brand itself and work out which are the best products that you might want to invest if you wanted to try this brand and those that you just need to give a firm pass to I total spoiler alert I have discovered some gorgeous gorgeous products through testing out face theory so hopefully get your pen and paper ready because there might be some products here that you might want to incorporate in your own skincare routine. I'm going to leave links to their website below if you do want to check out any of these um, products. This video isn't sponsored or has any affiliation with Face Theory. I bought and tried all these products myself, but I will leave the link there so it's easy if you want to do check out any of these products specifically. Now, a little bit about the brand itself. Face, Face Theory are a gorgeous UK-based brand. They're vegan and they're cruelty-free. I love that. I try only really to test out new brands when they are cruelty-free because I think it's 2020, guys. We need to be increasing the amount of cruelty-free skincare in our routines. So I love I love that they're offering a cruelty-free alternative. And also, I like the fact they're vegan because whilst I'm not a vegan myself, I do, you know, I do appreciate a lot of people are living a more plant-based lifestyle. So it's nice to be able to offer products which appeal to as wide a number of people as possible. And Face Theory do that. The thing that really sold this brand to me and which I think we should just call out from the start is they offer a fragranced and an unfragranced version of almost all their products. That is so amazing. I just wish more back brands would listen to what consumers are asking for and deliver this. You know, we do have a, a constant debate around whether fragrance is good or bad in skincare. You have the zealots that are like, no fragrance at any cost. It destroys your skin. Nobody should touch it. And those people like myself that do like a little fragrance in their lives and it gives that sensorial experience and we just enjoy an aromatherapy experience as part of our skincare and self-care routines. I think it's personal preference. Obviously, if you are sensitive to fragrance, skip it. If you enjoy a sensorial experience and it doesn't interact with your skin in a negative way, enjoy it for what it is. And I love that Face Theory have that option for you. Literally, when you come onto the product on their website, you just, before you click add to cart, you just click the fragranced or the unfragranced version. Easy, simple, and does away with all that drama and whether pro or anti fragrance you choose. And Face Theory are really good at helping you to do that. Also, while we're on their website, I love the fact that they have a separate section of pregnancy safe skincare. A question you guys keep asking me is, you know, people who are pregnant, what can they use? What can't they use? And it's just really good that if you go onto the Face Theory website, you can just click. If you're pregnant, you can just click there and you know exactly which products are applicable to you in your current situation. Perfect. I really wish more companies would do that to just make it that a little bit easier to make those informed decisions. Anyway, enough waffle. Let's get straight into it. What I think are the best. I love to start on the positive. These are the ding, 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 amazing products, which I really think you should consider adding to your skincare routine if they appeal to you. I'm going to go through the five and then we are going to come onto those products, which I just don't particularly like. I always say when I'm doing these reviews, I don't want to be shady and disrespectful to the company. Face Theory, even in the products I didn't like, have clearly put a lot of effort into formulations and developing the products. They just didn't work for me or I think that there's better products out there and I'll be justifying my reasons for including them on the fails list as we come onto them in the video. Now, First off, their number one star product in my eyes, and which I just, oh, it's very rare that I find a product when I'm searching stuff online and I think, wow, I have to have that. And then I'm almost in love with it before it even arrives. And then when it arrives, I turn into a full fangirl. Like honestly, instant holy grail, and I absolutely love the product. And uh, yeah, very rare that happens, and it has with this product, which is the Amil C Whip moisturizer. They do a SPF version and one without the SPF. I'm talking about the one without the SPF and I'll come on to why later. 
This is a gorgeous product. Whip moisturizers aren't new. They've been around for a while. It's basically when you take a moisturizer and you whip so much air into it that it's just light. It's like a cloud enveloping your skin. It's gorgeous. Beautiful for people like myself who have oily and acne skin. We don't want something that's too heavy sitting on our skin. It's also great in summer, even for people with you know, normal and combination skin. In summer when it becomes a bit sweaty and a bit warm, you want something that's light. You don't want something occlusive and just sitting like a mask on the skin. Whipped moisturisers are a fantastic way of getting that light moisturisation that isn't going to sit on the skin too heavily. And I love that. This one is beautiful. So the reason I fell in love with it before I even got my hands on it from the ingredients alone were the fact it has a 5% niacinamide. I spoke about niacinamide on this channel before. Beautiful ingredient, really, really good to have in your skincare routine to brighten the skin and help even out the oil production in the skin. However, scientific studies have shown it works best at between a 5 and a 7% concentration, and it's really difficult to find in a 5% concentration. So I love, love, love that they have it in this product. You guys have recommended this to me when I've said I'm looking for 5% niacinamide. You guys called this product out, and I'm so glad I tried it because I absolutely love it. It's also got vitamin C in there, which is fantastic because it's got two different different types of vitamin C. Um, these are vitamin C derivatives, which are great because it means you can use peptides alongside this. So if you're using something like the, um, you know, the ordinary buffet with copper peptides and you want a moisturizer and a vitamin C in one that can go alongside this, this is a great option because vitamin C derivatives don't interfere with peptides in the same way that pure vitamin C ascorbic acid does. So I absolutely love this. And one of them, one of the main vitamin C derivatives I lead in my life is ascorbyl phosphate because it's also, beyond being a brightening agent and a fantastic antioxidant, it will also help to um, reduce the amount of acne causing bacteria on the skin. So for someone like me who is acneic and breakout prone, ding, 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 I love this product. The formulation is stunning. I, the texture is gorgeous. I say to people, moisturizers are a really good step to include an niacinamide. Um, because it goes really well. It doesn't boil, it doesn't peel, it doesn't peel as an ingredient. So it goes really well into products. And it just means that you're capping all your routine off with a gorgeous antioxidant and brightening agent in the vitamin C and a fantastic niacinamide that's gonna over time help to constrict those pores and just brighten and give that skin a gorgeous glow. I love this product. It's 14 pounds. Like for that formulation and for the whipped consistency, I was expecting it to be double that, 14 pounds. Absolutely love it and it is definitely, definitely worth a try. So coming in at number two is their Clarifying Cleanser C2 Pro. I'm talking about the Pro. They do the Clarifying Cleanser and the Clarifying Cleanser Pro. This is the Pro one. The difference being one has natural sarpenins in and one doesn't. I think it's great to just have them in your life. So I would definitely get the Pro. This is £14 and is a stunning, stunning cleanser. So it takes natural sarpenins, which is a natural surfactant. So you're going to get a light foaming with it, but nothing too aggressive. And it's not going to strip and dry the skin like normal surfactants can. Um, Neod's um, Sanskrit Sarpenins Cleanser is one of my favourites. And this is a great dupe for that at about half the price. It's absolutely fantastic. But what really makes this a standout product is the ingredients, the active ingredients included beyond that. So it has a 4% concentration of glycolic acid, it's got a 1% concentration of lactic acid and a 2% concentration of salicylic acid. That is beautiful. Now, I give in and I give up. Lots of you, I've said for low, for the longest time possible, don't worry about actives in your cleanser, you're washing, you're putting them on and you're washing them off, they're not doing anything. And you guys have always read me to filth and said, but we love active cleansers, we love glycolic acid in our cleansers. I give in. If you are gonna use a treatment cleanser and you're gonna get a cleanser which has active ingredients in, get this one because it's actually got the right concentrations of those actives in. It's a beautiful blend. And because it's a really rich and creamy texture, you can leave it on the skin for a minute. So I would apply this, leave it on for a minute to let those acids do their work, to do their exfoliation and their deep clean and then wash it off. The problem with a lot of treatment cleansers is they come in a gel form, they foam, and then you can't really leave that on the skin for a minute to let those products actually do their work. This is different. If you want a treatment cleanser in your life, go for this one. £14, it's fantastic. You get the natural cleansing from the sarpenins and you get that beautiful, beautiful exfoliating, cleansing, deep cleaning from that beautiful mix of acids. I was so impressed. I had no idea something like this actually existed. You know, there's cleansers on the market that are salicylic based. You can get cleansers which are glycolic based, but nothing that is all blended beautifully like this. And for £14, again, I would expect this to be like double the price. I absolutely love this. And if you're going to go for a treatment cleanser, 
look no further. Coming in at number three, can you see I'm already quite heavy on the fangirl with this brand? You know, these already are game changing, nothing like it on the market products. So already we're onto a, off to a flying start. And number three is going to be the glycamide body cream. This also comes in at £14. Everything seems to be £14. I like that. A standard price point, a very fair and standard price point. This for me is on here. I because I have struggled for the longest possible time to find a cruelty-free alternative to some of the exfoliating um, creams by CeraVe. I don't like CeraVe. I have no time for them. I'll leave a link to a video as to why I don't particularly like the brand. And so I really want to be able to offer a cruelty-free, true cruelty-free alternative to their body creams and exfoliators. And this is one. I love this. So this has a 9% concentration of glycolic acid in there. That's pretty much unheard of in body exfoliating treatments. The body can actually withstand a little bit more than the face can in terms of the strength of product. I mean, for some reason, in body creams and exfoliators, there's always a lower concentration of the active acids. I don't get that. It should be a little bit higher, if anything. So this is like the body alternative, or the body equivalent of the 7% glycolic acid toning solution by The Ordinary. We love that on our face. This is glycolic acid dialed up a little bit in a cream consistency for the body. This is perfect for people who have KP, you know, the old chicken skin on the back of the arms and thighs. If anybody's suffering with breakouts in, let's just say discrete areas, you might be getting a little bit of acne on the lower back or the buttock, that's absolutely fine. This product will help to solve that. It's just gonna give that gorgeous all over hydration and exfoliation at the same time. It's cruelty free, it's reasonably priced, and the consistency is divine. I have stopped using the resurfacing cream by um, CeraVe, and I switched to this over the past two weeks, and it does exactly the same thing, if not a little bit better. I think the exfoliation is better, and the hydration is almost there. Maybe not quite as hydrating, but almost there. And it's really helped to tackle some of the um, acne breakouts I get on my body, but also some of the KP and the chicken skin I'm prone to getting on the backs of my arms. I love this product and this is going to be my new holy grail moisturizer for the body. Because of the strength of the acid in here, I wouldn't personally use it every single day. It says you can, but I think I'd probably use this as a twice a week treatment and then maybe just use a drugstore moisturizer the rest of the days. Um, it's a little bit strong, I think, to use every single day. But listen to what your body's saying. You will get some gorgeous, gorgeous results. And, you know, if we ever get to go on holiday this year... Get your beach body ready using this product. It's fantastic. Now, at number four comes a pore bright serum. This is N10, it's called. Don't know why it's called N10. Um, it's got 10%... Oh, that's why. It's got 10% ingredients in. There you go. It's got 10% azelaic acid and niacinamide in there. I adore azelaic acid. I think it's one of the best ingredients out there for helping to tackle pigmentation, redness. And it's not a strict exfoliating acid, but it does do a light exfoliation. But it's super gentle and it's clinically proven to take down the redness in people that have rosacea and to just help to eliminate some of the acne causing bacteria that sit on our skin. So this is a beautiful, beautiful ingredient to have in your skincare routine. And I love, love, love this serum. A lot of people say, should I go for the Paula's Choice Azelaic Acid, which is £40, or the Ordinary Azelaic Acid, which is £6, but they don't like the texture of the Ordinary as much? This is the halfway house. So this is a 10% azelaic acid, so the same concentration as the Paula's Choice and the Ordinary, with niacinamide, which is gorgeous, but it's a reasonable price point. So this is £15, so it's halfway between both products, and comes in a gorgeous cream consistency. So I'd say this is a really good dupe for the Azelaic Acid Booster by Paula's Choice if you don't want to spend Paula's Choice money. I, I just really love this and I love the fact we've now got more Azelaic Acid options in our lives and Face Theory has won me over. Now coming in at number five and this is really hard because I could actually have a top 10 easily. You know I loved a load of their products but to keep this video short and to give you a select edit I'm sticking to five and the fifth is the Lipo Q10 Oil Booster Serum. This is £19 so slightly more expensive than some of the others but with the cold pressed organic oils in here and the quality of the oils I do expect it to be a little bit higher in price so still fair price point. This has Q10 in it. Anyone that's watched this channel before knows I adore Q10. It's a fantastic antioxidant. It's also the energy our cells need to regenerate and repair themselves. So it's a beautiful addition to everyone's skincare routine. You can get it in creams really easily, but you can't get it in a rich, nourishing oil. This is the first time I've seen a Q10 in a rich, nourishing oil. This is a serum which is designed for people with dry skin. I wouldn't go anywhere near this with my oily, acneic skin, but if you have dry skin, 
This is a beautiful hydrator with a powerhouse antioxidant in there as well. It's so well formulated. The mixture of oils are ideally suited for people with dry skin. And I just think the addition of that Q10 just turns this from what is a standard, well-priced facial oil into like the stratosphere, because it's also got your antioxidant in there as well. Two steps in one, beautiful formulation, organic, cold pressed, everything you look for in a facial oil. I can't use facial oils, which is a shame because I love them. I absolutely love them. This one is fantastic. You can get fragranced and unfragranced. I got the unfragranced and it's got a really nice, like sometimes if you get, you know, oil-based cleansers or oil, you know, facial oils that don't have fragrance in, they can smell a bit, a bit funky, a bit, not all too great. This smells really nice. It's all natural, but it smells nice. So the unfragranced is the one I would go for in this particular instance. It just smells divine. And that Q10, I'm sold. Absolutely love it. And I think you should definitely check it out if you haven't already. Now, those are, like I said, I could go into about 10 of my favorites, but that's the select edit of those products, which I definitely think you should check out if you want to know what's worth purchasing from Face Theory. And actually, I check out the whole website because it is gorgeous and the whole brand is lovely. However, they do have some fails, which I do want to call out now. These are the products which either didn't work for me, I tested them and they just didn't work for me, or I didn't purchase because I just don't think they're worth it by looking at the ingredients. And um, you guys can feel free to disagree. If you've checked any of these products out, leave me a comment below. Number one is all of their SPF products. I talked about their gorgeous um, Amyl Vitamin C whipped moisturizer earlier in the video and said it had a non-SPF and an SPF version. Always go for the non-SPF because their SPFs are just odd. I'd say one of the undisputed laws of skincare is that you need an SPF 30 or higher. Anything less than that and you're risking not getting the protection, particularly because we never apply enough SPF or regularly enough during the day. So really an SPF 30 is the holy grail. Go higher if you'd like, but 30 should be the minimum. So I don't understand companies that then formulate products with SPF um, numbers lower than 30 and all of the SPFs in this range have an SPF value of lower than 30. Why? Um, some have 20, some have 25. Would it have been that hard to just push them and formulate them to 30? I don't think so. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, the difference between an SPF 25 and SPF 30 isn't huge. But again, I just think it shows a poorer formulation. I personally would have just upped the ante a little bit, go to 30, and then these would be standout products. For me, I still stick to the mantra that you need an SPF 30 as a minimum, and so I wouldn't recommend any of their SPF products. Though feel free to disagree with me if you have a different take on um, some factor protection. But for me, it's factor 30 or nothing, and so I would firm pass on all of the SPF products, none of which come up to the SPF 30. Also, in similar, in similar vein, their Cerasi Pore Reducing Toner. I have an issue generally with pore reducing claims. Niacinamide, great for over time. It might have a marginal impact on the size of your pores, but so much goes into pore size, genetics, diet, um, age, profile, things like that, which just you can't control with a serum. And so when a company puts pore refining on their marketing on their product, I just think it's very misleading because people put it on expecting a pore minimizing result in two weeks. It's just not gonna happen, however good or well formulated a product is. And so it's a natural pass for me when something promises something which they just can't deliver. And so this has vitamin C in, it has ceramides and it has niacinamide. All of those products are great, but none of them are going to have a meaningful impact on the size of your pores over a long period of time. And so I just find that you're, the company is setting themselves up to fail because you're not going to see the results you hope for with this product. There's nothing wrong with it. I just think it's promising more than it's going to deliver. Now, number three is their glycolic face scrub. Now, anybody that's watched this channel before, a scrub's why? So they do a beautiful glycolic acid based cleanser, which we talked about before, and they do a version with a scrub. It's natural, so it's got jojoba beads in, so they're natural, it's not plastic microbeads, but still, why are we scrubbing our face? And why are we calling it a scrub? So another issue I have with brands that call, that call products a scrub, why? Because it just tells the user to scrub. And that's the last thing you need to do. It can create micro tears, inflammation, and just all the nasties we don't need in our lives. Do not scrub and don't buy a scrub. Um, I just, I think we've kind of moved beyond that. We've moved, gone beyond the days when I was like 15 and I used to use the apricot scrub by St. Ives and scrub till my skin practically bled. We've been there. We've done that. I think we've kind of moved on. So this product, I think is lazy and doesn't need it. You've got a great option. I called it out earlier. You don't need this in your life. And then fourth is the Restore Soft Makeup Remover. 
I don't really get this. I didn't get the product, I bought it, and maybe I was the wrong person to test it because I don't wear makeup day to day. I gave it to a friend to try who does wear more heavy makeup and said, yeah, okay, it removed their makeup, but it left their skin quite dry. So this has a number of problems. First of all, it says it's eco-friendly solvents. What is that? What does that mean? I don't know what that means. I think it's just marketing. I don't really get what the difference between solvents, so they dry the skin. This, no exception. So it's quite drying. It's also coconut derivative based, which means it's slightly comedogenic. I won't go near this if you had oily or acneic prone skin uh, or an active breakout. And I don't really understand why you need this. It cleanses in this day and age should be good enough to remove makeup as well. The exception being if you're wearing very heavy or waterproof makeup, in which case a micellar water will do it. Take off, you know, your waterproof eyeliner and mascara with a micellar water. It's gentle, it's effective, it's well priced. And then use your normal cleanser as you would. You don't need a separate makeup remover. I think we kind of need to move on from that notion in 2020. Makeup removing wipes, the devil. This just, it dried, it didn't do anything. I didn't see the point of it. So that's firm. And then fifth, I'm going to put their, to what I class as their brushes, their tools. So they kind of do a Clarisonic style brush, which, you know, oscillates, vibrates and helps remove the makeup. We kind of discussed in my Clarisonic video, which I'll link there. Well, these products really didn't work. They weren't that effective. They actually could do more harm than good. And you just need your hands. Cleanse with your hands far better than any of these brushes. And so I won't be recommending this. It's not a terrible product. I just don't think you need it. You don't need to be spending 50 pounds on it. I, I didn't get it. There you go, guys. So we have a rundown of the holy grails and the fails from face theory. Leave me a comment below. Are you going to try any of these products out? Have you tried any of these products out? And what do you think of face theory itself? I have fallen hard for the brand. I've tried to I put an order a few other products which I couldn't get my hands on when I did my original order. And I honestly cannot wait. This is so innovative, yet well formulated, well priced, ethical, everything I want in a skincare brand. I, I this this could be my new holy grail. I have always said my top three brands, I don't know why I'm holding up four fingers, my top three three, there we go, brands <laughs> are the ordinary, the inculist, and Paula's choice. This is vying for one of those spots. I don't know whether, I'll have to try them out for a little bit longer where they work out whether it does penetrate the top three in terms of my favorite skincare brands, but I was shook. I loved, loved this brand from start to finish, and I hope you guys will explore it and let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and wherever you are in the world, guys, stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye.